Becoming excellent in the basics of life is something that I believe every young man and woman has the ability to possess. And I believe that it's one of the most important things that you can do in your whole life in terms of your relationships, in terms of your career, in terms of everything in life. And I think when I think of the basic stuff, you just need to think of anything that doesn't require any specific talent or intelligence. And you can pretty much do anything in the world, whatever it may be. You can possess all the skills out there. And I believe this is more desirable than ever before because few people are actually showing that they are very good in the basics. And I think sports is a very important example to look at. And I'm going to talk about a sports star later on in this video and kind of see how that works when you put together talent, talent and being very good across the board in just basic skills and you'll see what that kind of transitions to as a sports star but if you look at sports particularly football as something I've always been interested in as a young guy growing up in the UK football is massive here and I could be someone who works and dedicates my whole life to playing football I played football a lot when I was younger but I was never very talented at it naturally I didn't work very hard at it because I didn't have the mindset anyway to go and work hard at anything when I was young. But you see guys in the UK will dedicate their whole life to playing sports. They'll be put through the academies and the kind of the systems uh, within club football and work their way up and then still not make it. They could still lose to the fact that there'll be guys in Brazil, South America that are just naturally way more talented than them. They probably haven't worked anywhere near as hard. They just have that natural raw ability that a lot of us, especially in the UK, US, familiar with soccer, um, will know that we just don't have that kind of genetic skill set. And this is kind of a bit of a black-pilled kind of look on life, but I feel like sports is one of those things that if you don't have that somewhat level of skill set, you might not be the best at it, but you have to have a very good skill set naturally um, to be good at sports. And it's something that we can't really do too much about, particularly as it's something we usually start quite early on in our life. But anyway, I've developed a bit of a kind of, I've developed a couple of charts of the of the skill sets that I believe that you should possess and anyone can possess in this modern day to become very successful in life, whatever it is that you want to do. So I'll go to it now and the basic skills that I want to speak about, we'll go to the first one and that is reliability and reliability, I believe this is probably the most important skill that you could develop. I think if you are someone who is reliable, whether it be to your boss, to your family, to your relationships, whether that be in an intimate way or just a friendship way, that will take you a long way. If you are a safe pair of hands that someone can rely up upon, it's going to get you so far. Going back to the kind of sports analogy, you see football players who might not necessarily be the most talented players or anything along those lines. They don't have anything f fancy about them. Take someone like James Milner, for example. Then you see that a lot of managers love this type of player. He's played more games than nearly anyone in the Premier League. I think he's in the top three or four of all-time appearances in the Premier League. And a lot of this isn't down to his talent. I'm sure he does, like I say, have some level of talent in terms of football. I'm sure he's gifted with that. But a lot of it comes down to him having basic skills and reliability is one, he's like rarely injured and he's always called upon. He can play in a vast a variety of different positions on the football field. And if you can be that type of person who in your career, you can adapt to different positions, you can work with different people, you can go out in a social setting and be socialised with a range of different people from all different backgrounds with all different beliefs and kind of build relationships that way you're going to be so far advanced compared to most people who work, who just don't have that ability. I think reliability is definitely among the top three fundamental skills that you can develop because something that I've noticed, particularly in a lot of young guys, when whether they be my friends or people who I thought were friends in my life or people I thought I could rely upon, I've often been let down and... I've always kind of held myself accountable to not be that guy who would be letting other people down. I always, if I say I'm going to meet someone or if I'm going to do something, then I'm going to do it, particularly if I've said it to someone, like we're going to meet up. I feel 
it's not fair to waste other people's time but i've time and time again especially over a f- the last few years when i've gone through 18 19 20 21 now 22 a lot of guys and girls especially they they do end up letting you down and this can be very frustrating and i've always tried to hold myself like i say accountable to make sure that this doesn't happen to myself because the end of the day as as tough as it may seem the only person you can 100 percent rely upon is yourself and as long as you're doing that in your life in all the kind of different areas then you're going to be very well you're going to be doing very well and a lot of people are going to see this and they're going to want you as part of their life and the next basic skill quite links quite closely is communication communication is something that i struggled with a uh, large portion proportion of my life particularly verbal communication i would be very shy insecure i wouldn't really know what to say i wouldn't have a lot to say um and i really did struggle to communicate with people i'd always wait for people to come to me whether that be be friends or girls like i would never go and speak to a girl i'd never have the confidence to go up and do something like that and just in any social situation i really did struggle and it really does kind of hamper your ability to build relationships and you miss out on a lot of opportunities just through poor communication and if you're someone maybe in a in a job setting or something you want to get a raise you want to kind of go to a different role or you're not really happy with how something is working something could be a bit better if you have poor communication skills it's really gonna like i say hamper your ability to to build a better relationship and move along kind of what you want to do and get your points across and for me starting a youtube channel was massive for that i really have worked on my communication skills i think anyone who has seen my transition over the last like 15 months on youtube can see that in the way i speak and if you know me on a personal basis and meet me in person you can see i'm I'm a lot more effective in terms of my communication and also the way i'm able to articulate my words and just think a lot more on the spot i'm not saying uh uh i I don't know all of this I, i i normally normally have somewhat of a bit of an insight of what to say in the moment without really thinking about it too much in my mind like what i'm saying now just kind of comes naturally and it's something that i really struggled with but with everything that i kind of tell you in life a lot of it comes down to practice and that's something that i had to practice i had to implement it into my life on an everyday basis and if it wasn't for this if it wasn't for doing stuff like this putting myself in stuff that i didn't want to do and didn't come naturally to me i wouldn't have developed a very good communication level skill and something that when i say excellent in the basics i mean you're very good like you don't have to be the best in the world but anyone who would kind of interact with you would say yep you're very good at that you're very good at that just being very good and ta- like very good at these different categories these fundamental skills that i believe are uh, like crucial to your development as a human being and able to interact with everyone in society it's massive and the third point might be a bit of a, a bit of a different one is hygiene so i talk about hygiene and i talk about the way you present yourself but I think hygiene is massive because a lot of people you see go out on the streets and they just don't look put together very well. That might be their hair, their just appearance. You can just see like dirt in their nails. They smell quite bad. Just stuff like this that 20, 30 years ago, I would never have to mention this. It would never be pointed out really to anyone, maybe like a homeless guy um but other than that it would never really be something that you'd raise to people but time and time again this has been a point that i've i've noticed in day-to-day life people have very poor hygiene like they just a lot of people do just smell bad and you can just tell they haven't showered and like that that's a very basic level of hygiene like we could move on and talk about like presentation and stuff like that in in terms of how you present yourself um as a man or a woman like i feel like that is very important the way you dress and and stuff like that the way you style yourself because especially i see a lot of young people uh particularly when i've been to university they'll be wearing like like crocs and stuff i I don't know if that's if where you're from that's like massive but um in the uk it seems to be the in in thing at the moment sliders used to be the thing like socks and sliders and all of this stuff um, wearing just hoodies and, and guys will wear like jogging bottoms and girls will wear leggings literally I went in the other week it's quite funny I, I really noticed picked up on this that literally all the girls were wearing the same outfit they'd wear like a black hoodie uh, black leggings and they'd have like their socks rolled up with like new balance shoes and like literally 
70-80% of girls are wearing the exact same thing and to, to be fair guys I'm not saying it's just women or anything like that before people take it the wrong way a lot of guys very very similar north face coat on joggers trainers like at the end of the day it's not awful by any means especially as a young guy you're still learning what works what doesn't you don't care too much I understand hopefully a lot of guys change this as they get older but I feel like if you can set that apart, if you can start this stuff quite early on in your life, then it w really will help help you. And yeah, people are going to take you a lot more seriously. If you can obviously, I hope you're not someone who has to look at the basics, such as just like smelling okay, not having like really greasy hair, not having like dirty nails or like bad breath or anything like that. Um, but once you've got those stuff out of the way, then you can look a bit more about how you present yourself, how you're... Look, I kind of I feel I always think like tattoos and piercings and having like weird hair sh styles and weird hair colors. I feel like whether you think that's right or wrong, a lot less people will take you seriously if you have these types of things. So I feel like that's very important. And if you are someone, especially in like a business setting, you want to be taken seriously. Y you can't be wearing like stuff that's just like loads of piercings have tattoos everywhere have these weird hairstyles it's just not going to go well and another point that i want to make on this first slide this first kind of block of basic skills is being likable and i put like a, a little star next to this because i understand that not everyone is going to like you not everyone likes me there's probably people watching this now who don't like me and that's okay i don't expect that to always be the case but I believe that if you can get the vast majority of people to be on your side and, and, and like you for whatever reason it is, as long as you have something about you, you're a genuine good person, most people are going to like you, whether that everyone does or not, or whether you have kind of different beliefs. I don't think that really matters. Like, There's a people out there who I have very different beliefs to, and they have very different beliefs to me, but I still like them and they still like me. It doesn't really matter. Like People think a lot about that just because you think differently. It doesn't mean that you're not likable or you don't like them at all. I feel like that's a very misconception and just causing drama for no reason, stuff like that. But like I say, if you're just being a good person, you come in with good intentions and you always make people feel welcome and stuff like that is very hard to not really like someone when they're doing the right thing. So on to the next block. The first one might be the most important, I would probably say. And that is sleep. I honestly don't understand how people sleep on like four or five hours a day. Like for me, that just seems ridiculous. I feel like you need to be getting eight to nine hours sleep. I try to get nine hours sleep or so. So I'd try go to bed maybe 11 till eight or oh, that would be, yeah, that would be nine hours or 10 to seven, half 10 to half seven. To be fair, that's probably what works best for me. And that is about nine hours, but I'm not, like you have to remember, you're not actually asleep for the whole nine hours. So I'm getting about eight, eight and a half hours max on a very, very good night. Um, so that's something that is crucial. And for me, it's just, it has to happen. I have to, if anything less than like seven and a half hours, I'm just not, nowhere near my best. And I know for whatever reason, if you just think, well, I don't have enough time to sleep, like that is a ridiculous point. And you have to prior your life should pretty much revolve around sleep i truly believe because if you are not sleeping for around eight hours a day you're not going to be able to function correctly and do the things that you want and need to do in your life and if that means you miss out on social events or miss out on other kind of tasks that you try and do just to fill time then you just have to do it you have to prioritize sleep and i really can't underestimate the importance of that from someone who over the last year has really started to see the importance of that in my day-to-day -day life i'm getting up and going to sleep at the same time which is a, a very important point too if you if you're not too aware like it massively affects your circadian rhythm if you are waking up and going to sleep at all different times because your body is completely out of sync it doesn't know if it's coming or going and when you're going to be waking up like middle of the day and then naturally you're not going to be tired till a lot later on in the day and if you need to be up again early the next day you're going to be sleep deprived again so it just doesn't really work and for a lot of people they work monday to friday then they have saturday and sunday off so monday to friday they'll be in a good rhythm waking up same time probably going to sleep maybe 11 waking up at 7 something like that Saturday, Sunday, it's a different ball game. They're probably going out on a Friday and Saturday um, night. 
so they probably they're probably going to be going to bed a lot later even if people don't go out people just tend to naturally go to bed a bit later i mean i don't think this is a massive problem at all like if you're not doing as long as you're not going out and drinking loads and taking drugs or anything like that i don't think if you're going to bed a bit later and waking up a bit later on the weekend i i personally don't see that as a problem i don't think it should matter but if you're completely going out of sync of like I say, that circadian rhythm where you're wake, you're going to sleep at maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m., getting up at like 10. It's just not good for that. And also for your productivity and how you're feeling inside of yourself, which is massive. You're not going to be feeling great if you're waking up 10, half 10. Half the day's gone already. You're like, oh, well, you're kind of like slopping around. You're like, don't have a lot of energy. You need to have a shower. And by the time you've got anything done, it's like midday. And then it's like, well, it's already midday. What do I do now? You've not really got any plans. The day kind of gets away from you before you know it. So sleep, like I say, I think is probably number one on the on the kind of basic skills that anyone could master. Anyone could get a 10 out of 10 in sleep. Uh, and yeah, something I've massively developed over the last few years. Next one, very important, top three or four for sure, is financial literacy. So this is something that I strongly disagree with in terms of the school system. It's not taught in school to be financially literate. Um, whether you believe this is like an agenda against this, whether they kind of do it on purpose to kind of keep you trapped in, in a nine to five job and kind of need you to be dependent on that. I think there's probably some truth in that, but I'm not gonna go too into the depths of that. Um, but I believe financial literacy is so important because I've seen a lot of people with a lot more money than me uh, maybe earning you can earn 5 10 20k it doesn't really matter how much you earn a month i always tell people this if you don't know how to spend your money and allocate it to different parts of your life you're never going to become rich and wealthy and wealth is the most important thing a lot far more important than being rich and seen to be rich of course so this is something that I had to learn. I, I read very basic books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was the the first book I read on financial literacy. Um, and that really helped me with just understanding the basics. Like a lot of people kind of ridicule it and say like, oh, it's so basic. Everyone knows it. But a lot of people clearly don't know it because the way they live their lives and probably the people who are like ridiculing it the most are the ones who actually are the ones buying liabilities it's a lot about assets and liabilities and i believe that is crucial to a young child's development i believe if if 16 17 year olds pick this book up they would be in such a better position by the time they reach adulthood when they're like 19 20 years old when i was making really poor decisions on finances i didn't know how to spend money anything like that so that set me back and it's only now I've kind of reined that back in a bit and be like okay I kind of know what to do with my money I can still develop it a lot um, but it's kind of there's a lagging time for me to kind of catch up and get to where I want to be in that um, and honestly yeah this is so important because you can get into business you can get into making money online but if you're not financially literate which a lot of people aren't um, I wouldn't know the percentage but I'd imagine it's probably around 80% of people aren't really they could say that they truly are um, very important so read a, f a few books Rich Dad Poor Dad like I say very good one The Psychology of Money 2 was massive by Morgan Husserl so I'd highly recommend those too do some more research on that watch YouTube videos listen to podcasts there's a lot of good stuff out there third one is having a plan and this isn't necessarily like it's hard to say it's a skill but having a plan is something that has really aided me in the last year or so. Because when I was like 19, 20, there was no plan really. I was doing a degree and I kind of didn't really know what I was doing. I was interested in property, but I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Like how how is this gonna work? Where was this gonna lead to? What was kind of the long-term thinking? I think I've never been too bad with this. I've kind of always thought a bit more long-term than the average person. Um, but like I say, the last year or so, I've kind of really, put that together developed a plan where i'm like okay i'm gonna do this for a few years then i'm gonna move on to this and this and this and then kind of having that plan and like i've, I've said in this in previous videos if your plan changes over time that's fine you just adapt and then edit your plan and then keep going towards it but just, ha just having something to work towards even if it's very basic or even if it's very generic it's kind of like just copying someone's but it's still a plan it's a lot better than not having a plan and just kind of living a life of like pleasure and not really having any direction in life is very difficult and something that really affected me a lot mentally i found in finding that plan of what i kind of 
where I see my life heading. Like I say, it's not a detailed, I don't have a business plan or anything. I didn't spend hours writing it down. I just know roughly where I kind of want my life to head. And for me, that's enough. Maybe you want to go into more detail or whatever, but having a plan, I believe, is crucial for every young man and woman out there. And number four on this side is body language. So I've, sport, I've spoke uh, extensively about communication in this video. The next point is body language. And obviously this is a form of communication because back in the day, <laughs> um, around, I'm not sure how many years ago, but a few hundred years ago, obviously language was, wasn't was a thing really. Uh, back in the caveman days, it would all be non-verbal communication. And I think that makes up around 80% of our communication to this day. So developing good body language is something that I've had to learn and someone like I say of shy insecure so naturally my body language would represent this and in interactions I would struggle because it would make clear that I'm not very confident I don't know what I'm talking about and all of this it wouldn't be a good look and I feel like body language is important and a lot of people subconsciously realize your body language says a lot about you and yeah it's something that you could definitely develop on we can always improve on every area of our life but once you start taking notice of your own body language and other people's body language, this will really, really help you. I definitely advise you to go watch some videos on body language. First Man is a very good example of someone who's implemented this in his life and I'm pretty sure he's still got some videos regarding body language, so check out First Man. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you are communicating with your body it's very important especially when it comes to like relationships I think that's something if you're trying to attract a woman in your life and if you're someone who's really like closed off and you're looking down and you don't appear, appear confident that's going to come across to her and naturally that's not a very attractive trait right I think everyone can agree with that I don't think many girls out there really want like a really shy guy who's not confident in himself it's just it just isn't very attractive for me, I don't really find like really shy girls who are really insecure attractive either. It might be different for you, but I think it's it's going to help you a lot more and it's going to make you also, more importantly, feel a lot better about yourself if you have really good body language. You're putting yourself out there. You look confident. Like You don't have to overdo this and be like I say, I've said previously, like, like a Conor McGregor walk with your shoulders back, your chest so high out that it looks just obvious and you just do look like a bit of a dickhead really, but... I would advise, yeah, just just do a bit of research on body language and you kind of know, once you kind of do it a bit, you'll kind of realise and pick up what are other guys doing, what are other women doing and does this look good? It will kind of feel natural, not natural. As long as it feels natural and you feel confident in yourself, that's probably the best way to go about body language. The final point is diet and I don't know why this is a final point I've actually got down because it could be, like I say, top three um of of skills and like i get say is it really a skill maybe not but developing a strong diet is something that i've really found to be very beneficial to my life over the last couple of years i really started to cut out the crap in my life whether that be junk food fizzy drinks and just eating things that didn't really help my progress in the gym didn't make me feel good slowed me down when i try and record videos would just not help me in any way and doing a bit of research into kind of good microbiome it, it shows how important it is what you eat on a day-to-day -day basis how it makes you feel how it kind of slows your body down slows your mind down um so for me i've really honed in on this and for me meat eggs fish potatoes vegetables fruit it's as simple as that like that's what you need to focus on and just cutting out like just the rubbish out of your life don't get me wrong i enjoy a sweet treat every now and then i do i do treat myself and i'm not regiment re regimented in my diet 100 percent. i i don't think that's necessary and i don't think it's really good to do that either because i think you should enjoy yourself whatever it may be you like to indulge in but diet, just clean up on your diet. It will help you a lot, not just physically, but mentally. It will help you a lot to progress and just help your brain a lot because like your brain and your body are so linked. And yeah, one kind of complements the other. So I'd do some research on diet, but like I say, there's very, it's not hard at all. Just cutting out the rubbish and focus on kind of like food that our ancestors would eat. Like, like I say, meat, bread, 
potatoes, stuff like this. Like it's it's stuff that we would always eat. So they're the, they're the skills that I've got. There's obviously a lot more that I could go into, but there are the main ones that I've thought of anyway. Um, but yeah, so my advice is that if you are younger and you are someone watching this video today, this will help you so much over the next few years to just get ahead of your peers and anyone around you. Not that I see life as a competition really, I feel like you should be fully focused on what you want to do and becoming the best version of yourself and not comparing yourself too much to others. Unfortunately, we do this too much. But I just think this can just set you apart so bad compared to the rest of the people who won't be doing these types of things and won't learn about it. And by the time they kind of realise it from their day-to-day -day life, it's a bit too late. But I'm got, the next kind of thing I want to talk about, I want to kind of give a sporting example. And the guy I'm going to talk about is Jude Bellingham. So a lot of you who follow football will know who Jude Bellingham is. 20-year-old uh, superstar, I guess you could say nowadays, playing for Real Madrid, the best club in the world. I think a lot of people would agree. Um, if you look at this guy for, for who he is as a person, this guy is destined for the top if you, if you don't consider him already there now. And a lot of this isn't just down to his talent. A lot of it is down to the person who he is inside. You can see he's just got that mindset that is just a million times ahead of anyone else his age the way he speaks i've never seen that from a guy who was 18 at the time um and now he's 20 and like i say playing for the best club in the world he's not a guy who's wearing like fancy jewelry and he's got tattoos or he's got like a, a like a strange haircut dyeing his hair or anything like that and I know that this guy is is going to be destined for the top. And I think that is what you have to look at. You don't look at the glitz and the glamour of the life of Madrid, becoming a footballer, earning all this money per month. Like That's not what I want you to focus on. It's to focus on this guy who's clearly very intelligent, got his head down. And a lot of it, fair play, has come from his parents who have set him up in good stead. They've clearly got a good head on their shoulders. They've disciplined him. The same with his brother. He's got a brother who plays for Sunderland um, called Job, I believe. And yeah, clearly they've turned them into very talented players. But at the end of the day, this guy who was just a normal guy from Birmingham. Obviously, yes, very talented, you can say that. But there's a lot of guys out there who are very talented as well, but they don't have all these attributes that I've mentioned in today's video. And that's something that I want you to take and hold it with you for the rest of your life. And like I say, if you can implement this in your day-to-day -day life, you will be really winning, really winning in life. And yeah, so just ha not having that skill set is just not enough. And also, this player is at Real Madrid, like like I mentioned, being an English player, going to Spain, going to Madrid is something you don't see a lot at all. And to have that kind of maturity, which a lot of this comes down to, is so key. You would Like a lot of players would have gone to Manchester City, would have gone to Chelsea, would have gone to Manchester United. And you've seen this, especially with players at Manchester United. And it's not worked out because of their attitudes, because of the maturity, because of all these stuff that I have mentioned, the little things that add up. And the, this guy, it's like slow and steady wins the, wins the race. And it's that old saying, hard work beats talent when talent works harder. And that's something that I think is crucial in, in our day-to-day -day life and something that you should always remember. And yeah, I think that will, will, will set you apart in the long run. But... That's what I want you to leave you with for this video because my camera is literally about to die. Um, so yeah, if you're anyone who's looking for the transformation, whether that be your body or your mind or any other unprecedented circumstances, my personal one-to-one -one coaching link will be below. If you can like and subscribe, much appreciated. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.